to controlled demolition. More times than not, when their barricade is gone, they give up. Billings law enforcement turned to an interesting tactic to end Saturday's standoff peacefully. Plus taking away unnecessary red tape. It's pretty imperative that we make sure that these test strips are not illegal. The Montana legislature aims to save lives from fentanyl. We'll tell you how. And a path into the mine. It's great to be able to get in there and help these guys get some of their properties back. A new road will soon be on the way. Stillwater County as a local construction company is excited to give back to the community they love. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Monday. I'm Andrea Lutz. And I'm Russ Riesinger. We'll get to those stories in a moment. But first, tonight, New York City officials are bracing for protests as they gear up for the possibility of former President Donald Trump's indictments. Trump took to social media over the weekend, indicating he'll be arrested tomorrow over hush money payments, urging his supporters to protest and take the nation back. Now, some fear those words could trigger violence, similar to January 6, in which six Montanans are charged for their roles, even though the House Speaker promises it won't. Our David J has the latest on the situation. What preparations, if any, are being made here in Billings? We contacted law enforcement and have not heard of any concerns as of now. Former President Trump stated over the weekend that he would be arrested on Tuesday, but he also said there's no misdemeanor and no crime. A New York grand jury heard from attorney Robert Costello about alleged hush money payments made to adult film actress Stormy Daniels in the lead up to the 2016 presidential election. My only mission there today was to tell the truth. Costello challenged the credibility of Trump's former attorney Michael Cohen, who testified last week and pleaded guilty in 2018 to making the payments. Stormy Daniels had negative information that she wanted to put in a lawsuit against Trump. So Michael Cohen decided on his own, that's what he told us, on his own, to see if he could take care of this. Trump also questioned the credibility of Cohen. The Manhattan District Attorney has been investigating if Trump has a role in the payments. Really what we're talking about is the falsification of business records, which is typically a misdemeanor, but it's going to be kicked up, we think, to a felony. On Monday, New York Police Department officers began setting up barricades near the downtown courthouse complex in preparation of protests, but House Speaker Kevin McCarthy downplayed any concerns. Let me be very clear. No matter what transpires, and this doesn't mean this is going to happen, but if was this to happen, we want calmness out there. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, a potential 2024 presidential candidate, criticized the Manhattan DA. He chooses to go back many, many years ago uh, to try to use something about po porn star hush money payments. You know, that's an example of pursuing a political agenda. The former president had previously declared his 2024 candidacy. In Billings, David J. MTN News. Billings police are investigating a homicide tonight after an early morning shooting leaves one man dead. That shooting taking place right after 3 a.m. in the 200 block of North 18th Street. Officers originally responded for a report of a disturbance, but upon arriving on scene, they found a 25-year-old man dead of an apparent gunshot wound. Lieutenant Matt Lennox said in a Twitter post that all parties involved are accounted for and the investigation is ongoing. No other details have been released. Tonight, we're learning new details about that 14-hour standoff in the Billings Heights over the weekend that left an officer shot, landed a woman in jail. At a news conference today, Billings Police Chief Rich St. John stressed that their number one goal was to prevent loss of life, and they implored a number of tactics to make that happen. Our Haley Monaco has more. Police are saying they used controlled demolition as one tactic in the 14-hour standoff that occurred Saturday. Now, controlled demolition is exactly what it sounds. They ripped off sides of Mary White Crane's trailer to try and find her as she had barricaded herself during the standoff. What was problematic is that she had barricaded herself. Billings Police Chief Rich St. John went in depth Monday. A refrigerator was uh, was in the in the middle here made it very difficult for officers to see. Breaking down the timeline and events that took place on Birch Lane between 57-year-old Mary White Crane and multiple law enforcement agencies. St. John confirmed 13-year police vet Mike Urena was the officer shot early on in the standoff. The shot penetrated a ballistic shield carried by the lead officer 
and struck him just below the body armor and in his lower abdomen. He was likely struck with a high-speed round from one of multiple firearms found inside the residence. On scene were uh, two shotguns, a 12 and a 20 gauge, and slug rounds. Urena was in stable condition at a local hospital as of Monday afternoon. After multiple failed negotiation attempts trying to use family members to speak with White Crane, law enforcement turned off water and power to the entire neighborhood and then tore into White Crane's home from multiple sides to be able to see her, a tactic St. John says they've used at least three times before. And essentially what you're doing when you have barricaded subjects is you start tearing their barricade apart. More times than not, when their barricade is gone, they give up. Once White Crane's barricades were down, police used help from the Billings Fire Department and sprayed a high-powered hose into the home, ultimately leading to her surrender. We're here to preserve life, property secondary. And unfortunately, you know, you have one individual that held, host held a neighborhood hostage for uh, for many, many uh, hours. Chief St. John says things could have ended differently if law enforcement wanted them to, especially with emotions running high after an officer was wounded. But he was proud of his staff for putting life above all, no matter how long that took. It's because the extraordinary efforts we're trying to do to ensure safety for everybody. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. The suspect, Mary White Crane, is due in court tomorrow. Now, she faces several charges, including one count of attempted deliberate homicide and three counts of felony criminal endangerment. Well, as the Billings police officer shot in this standoff continues to recover tonight, we're reflecting on the last time a Billings police officer was seriously injured by a gunshot in the line of duty. Officials believe it was back in 1989 when Detective Alex Mavity was killed in the line of duty. He was just 28 years old. Mavity was shot and killed while attempting to recapture a prisoner who had escaped his custody. Mavity chased the suspect into an alley where that suspect was attempting a carjacking. He struggled with the suspect. Both were shot and both of them died. He left behind a wife and an infant daughter. Winter weather advisory is into effect once we start looking anywhere from Reed Point, Big Timber, in through Sweetgrass County over towards Livingston and Bozeman Pass. That's where we're expecting some accumulation of snow, at least in the grassy areas in some places, and a bit more, especially for the higher elevations. But Doppler radar, we're picking up on a few showers already as we start looking into the eastern plains, right close to Billings here in the western part of Yellowstone County, and a few flurries here and there elsewhere. Temperatures this evening are mainly 20s, although we're as cold as the teens right now up in circle, and you can see some uh, 30s in the mix as well. Pretty good snow making weather. We're not expecting much of the way of accumulation, but there could be some slick spots. We're going to talk more about it in a few minutes. Stick around. Tonight, we're watching movement in the Montana legislature to take away unnecessary red tape in order to save lives from fentanyl overdoses. It all comes down to drug test strips, which are considered illegal to use in the state of Montana. But as our Diane Parker reports, these strips could be helpful in saving lives if lawmakers just change some minor wording to the law. A quick drive around town will show you that you can find drug testing kits here in Montana just like this at about any local box store, a grocery store, pharmacy, even ones like this at your local dollar store. Now what you may not know is that these are actually illegal here in Montana and that has law enforcement officials and state lawmakers working to make these legal, especially with the rise of fentanyl overdoses in Montana. One death is too many. It's pretty imperative that we make sure that these test strips are not illegal. But right now they are illegal due to what lawmakers call code clutter. That has billing state representative Katie Zolnikov working hard in Helena to strike the word test from a long list of items considered drug paraphernalia. There are people across the state who are unknowingly breaking the law. In Montana, criminal possession of drug paraphernalia is a misdemeanor punishable by up to six months in prison and or an up to five $500 fine. From just individual consumers to law enforcement officers to, in some cases, business owners, if they are wanting to administer drug tests, they're using these drug tests. It's technically considered drug paraphernalia. There's a lot of folks breaking the law, but it isn't enforced. After checking with multiple law enforcement agencies, Montana Highway Patrol, Billings Police, and the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office, I found exactly zero citations on record. Usually the people that we 
you're coming across are people that are actually distributing this drug, and we're not seeing the test strips and the individuals that were arresting throughout Montana. Meaning moms and dads testing their naughty teens can breathe easy. A woman with a date rape drug test in her purse won't go to jail. But when it comes to public health, supporters of HB 437 say the code clutter has got to go before more people die from fentanyl overdoses. Enabling people to possess the strips without being subject to criminal penalties will allow people access to an easy to administer and affordable means to determine if their drugs have been adulterated with fentanyl. The CDC's Stop Overdose campaign encourages the use of fentanyl test strips, even giving instructions on how to crush pills, add water, and dip a testing strip. But back in Montana, Yellowstone County's Public Health Department says we are not supplying them at this time because of the law. Rimrock, the region's largest drug treatment center, isn't supplying them either, but says it supports HB 437 as a risk mitigation tool. Pills that mimic other prescribed drugs but are laced with illicit fentanyl have been identified in Montana. Contributing to an unprecedented number of fentanyl overdoses statewide, including eight in January alone. House Bill 437 is passed second reading. Now on to the state Senate after passing the House unanimously with no opponents. In Billings, Diane Parker, MTN News. Once House Bill 437 hits the state Senate, if approved, it would take effect immediately, making drug test strips legal here in Montana. Now tonight we're getting word and condolences from Montana's two U.S. Senators that the last known Pearl Harbor veteran in Montana, Charlie Dowd, has passed away. Dowd, who is from Anaconda, was just 17 years old when the Japanese attacked the U.S. Naval base in Pearl Harbor. During that attack, Dowd and another sailor grabbed rifles, climbed to the roof of a building and started shooting at the attacking planes. Senator Steve Daines called Dowd a Montana hero with John Tester saying he is one of Montana's very best and will be sorely missed. Well, still to come on the M10 10 o'clock news here on Q2, chaos in the Cowboy State. A full abortion ban takes effect in Wyoming. We'll tell you what's next. And later, a local construction company stepping up to literally pave a way back into the Stillwater Mind. That story in just a bit.